Somebody in the comment section of yesterday's video, she commented and said, I came to this video to have my spirits lifted and I haven't been able to stop laughing. That's the goal, man. That That's the goal. Like, we obviously talk football all day, every day. We talk Baltimore Ravens and other stuff going on, too. But that is the primary goal of this channel. So everybody can come through, have a good time. Some videos are a little more serious than that, but we don't, we don't try to take nothing too seriously. We have a, a good time on here, and we want y'all to have a good time as well. I love y'all. I, I really, really appreciate y'all, man. Seriously. I, I really, really do. And comments like that is literally everything to me man because that, that that just that lets us know that something is going right it's a lot of stuff with the baltimore ravens going wrong right now but that seriously that lets us know something is going right um somebody who especially this season hasn't been rubbing a lot of fans the right way and apparently rubbed the quarterback the wrong way just a little bit was mr marlon humphrey uh marlon humphrey uh Despite what you believe, there have been a couple of rough moments, but Marlon Humphrey been doing his thing this year. He really has been. Marlon Humphrey has been, overall, he's been playing some good Ravens football this year. Um, now, we know he got a lot of takes. He got a lot to say, and sometimes some of his comments can be a little outlandish, but Marlon Humphrey, when he's on, he's on. Um, but anyway, Marlon Humphrey, uh, after the Baltimore Ravens got their very first win Finally, it, it feels like it had been forever because the last time we had actually saw them win a game, a real game, was against the Houston Texans in the playoffs. And whew, that was forever ago. Anyway, they got a win over the Dallas Cowboys, and it was a win where they jumped out to 28-6, and then the Cowboys started creeping back in. It was looking like, oh, boy, here we go again. But the Ravens said, nope, we're putting an end to this. But Lamar, excuse me, not Lamar Jackson, but Marlon Humphrey, after every road game, every every road win, Marlon Humphrey goes on IG Live, Instagram Live. And he did that uh, this past Sunday. And he was talking to none other than Lamar Jackson. And Lamar Jackson said, yeah, we, I'm happy we got the dub, but basically we still got a lot of work to do. A whole lot of work to do. And then he even called Marlon Humphrey out. He said, well, why you didn't catch that pick? You, you dropped it. And Marlon Humphrey said, well, it, it, it was a penalty anyway. And Lamar said, you know, you still dropped it, though. And Lamar continued to get on him. He said, I remember when they put that report, because I remember that report, too, from training camp. I'll never forget it. But Lamar, and obviously Lamar won't either. But Lamar said, I remember when they put that report out. They put it out that Lamar Jackson threw four interceptions to Marlon Humphrey. He said, that's why I kept throwing it to you. But he said, for, for that report to come out and for you to, to drop it, like, what's that about? And Marlon Humphrey's like, oh, I, I should have I squeezed it. But, whoa, hold on a minute. But anyway, so Mar Marlon Humphrey, <laughs> he got it. But he took it a step further because obviously a lot of fans, us fans will recognize everything. Ravens fans, they are private investigators. And if something happens, if something seems a little bit off, they will find it and find out about it. And that's exactly what they did. And Marlon Humphrey and Jack Settlement, shout out to the both of them. They seen that and they addressed it on this today's fresh new episode of the punchline podcast let's listen to what they had to say and what marlon humphrey had to say specifically about him and lamar jackson's beef bleacher report espn they're all pushing this agenda that lamar jackson is not a fan of you if you missed the victory ig live uh lamar told him to get off the live he told him he can't catch hey and if that was your first victory ig live you would actually know that was the most lamar jackson has ever participated that's a good point live, but yeah you don't really be on him like that your feud with lamar i i was unaware about the bleacher report espn um yeah apparent yeah um so that's a little surprising um so i guess i have beef with the quarterback <laughs> and marlon was a troll man no. being, really I mean, that can go bad, but as we all know, Lamar's never really, I don't really know, I don't think Lamar's ever really happy after a win, honestly. Like, mm. I, he, he really, like, I don't think he'll really, Lamar Jackson, and I quote, I'm not coming on your pod until we win a Super Bowl. And mm. that, so, he, I'm sure he's the most requested guest. About this throughout the years in the media, winning a game ain't really... He wants to win the big one, right. or he ain't really going to be too happy. I mean, that's a guy that's daggum striving for excellence. Makes sense. I like it. But, I, I mean, I, I thought, thought they played pretty well yesterday. But 
Oh yeah, back to me. Um, yeah, I, uh, I would. Uh, Lamar's my guy. I <laughs> swear <laughs> you, Lamar's. Yeah, guy. yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, we surveys, honestly. surveys honestly out. We sounds like in the media ways, I'm not. It might be. It might be getting bad out here. There's a possibility. Mm. So special shout out to Jack Settlement and Marlon Humphrey for their Punchline podcast. I put the link to that episode in the description. I know most of y'all check it out already, but just in case you haven't. You can check that out. But Marlon Humphrey, and he did joke. He made light of the situation. And it is a light situation. It's not serious at all. But Marlon Humphrey said something that was very serious about Lamar Jackson. And he talked about how with Lamar Jackson, he said Ravens could win, but Lamar Jackson still, like, he won't be happy. And I don't even think it's that he won't be happy, but more so he won't be satisfied. Why? Because like, just like Marlon Humphrey said, and he quoted he said, Lamar said, I ain't coming on your podcast until we win the big one, until we get the Super Bowl. And so we want Lamar Jackson to go on the Punchline podcast so bad because that would mean the Baltimore Ravens, they got the job done. But that just speaks to Lamar Jackson's mentality. Even this season alone, it, like you could tell from just looking at his eyes when Marlon Humphrey had the camera on him, like he wasn't feeling that. He was, you could tell by his post-game interview that we talked about yesterday that he glad that they won, but he knows, he recognizes, he realizes that the Baltimore Ravens, they got a whole lot of cleaning up to do. They have to do more. They have to do better. They have to get better. And I appreciate that because that's something that not only Lamar Jackson recognizes, but fans have, they recognize, we've recognized it. That these Baltimore, they got a lot of cleaning up to do, especially because of that that statistic about Baltimore Ravens in the fourth, like this season in the fourth quarter, like first three quarters, Ravens they normally do their thing, even this season alone, wipe out all the other previous seasons. But if we're talking about right here, right now, in the first three quarters, the Ravens have been doing it, but the fourth quarter, it something just goes on and goes off. Where they just they just put a screeching halt to everything positive, and things just get ugly fast in every single game. Now, of course, every single game has context with it too. And then, like I hate still bringing this up, but it's true: the officiating in these games has been on another level, but a, a lower level, like way lower level, not a good thing at all. Especially against the Baltimore Ravens, and they have been some. They haven't been the end-all, be-all for the Ravens, but they have been some game-changing penalties called against the Ravens where you look at them and it's like, what, huh? What? But anyway, Lamar Jackson knows, and, and this is how you can tell how just dialed in, how locked in he is, and how badly he wants it. Like, he not with all the funny stuff, right? Oh, of course, he's going to laugh and joke around at times and whatnot, have a good time. Like, it ain't like he walking around mad. Oh, I'm mad at everybody. I'm just going to be angry. No, it ain't like he doing that. But he letting it be known, like, look, we won, but that ain't good enough. That's not cutting it. And that's how we want our QB1 to be. Now, team, keep it clean. Before we continue, do not forget about the giveaway to the Ravens Bengals Thursday night football game brought to you by Heart of the City Clothing. To get entered into that giveaway, the details are in the description, but I'll also have it as the pinned comment to make it super, super easy. Make sure when you do it, when you purchase something from their website and Flock Apparel, you use code Engraven20 to get that 20% off. They love you. Oh, man, I'm telling you, team, keep it clean. They really, really do so don't forget also something else that you don't need to forget about make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on and leave a like on the video it helps out a ton i i feel like i ain't gotta tell y'all to do it because y'all been doing it y'all been coming through but please continue to leave a like on the video continue to subscribe to the channel let's all grow together let's make the team keep it clean family even bigger speaking of getting bigger and growing some of the biggest people on the baltimore ravens team is their offensive line but today in practice they are actually doing the opposite of growing and they've been decreasing what do we mean when we say that well let's listen to this report from jeff Srebic. he said ravens start practicing for the bills without three starting offensive linemen tyler linderbaum patrick mccarry and andrew Voorhees. all 
not practicing. Now, I'm not going to trip about that. I ain't going to stress about that. It's Wednesday. They got uh, Thursday. They got Friday. So they, they got time. Now, if, if we get to tomorrow, then I'm going to start like, I don't know, my friends. Then if we get to Friday and some, uh, there's a, oh, yeah, but it's Wednesday. So we ain't tripping right now. Um, he also said not practicing Jalen Alma Davis with a hamstring injury and Michael Pierce. Uh, he said he was flexing his arm and shoulder on Sunday. So hopefully it ain't nothing serious with any of those guys and they'll all be back to practicing as early as tomorrow. Oh, we done made it y'all to my favorite part of these videos where we get to hear from you all. If you would like to send a question to be featured in the video, uh, if for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. If you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids. It's down below in the description. There's so much stuff down below in the description, so check it out when you get some time. Or if you're not a Team Keep It Clean patron, which is fine, you can send it on an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Let's get into it. First question came from a Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy, Nova. He said, 75 cents. Can, can I borrow that, please? Anyway, he said, Ain't Graven. Uh, Nova here again. And two things I want to ask about. Last time I asked, what was the difference between Bill Belichick and John Harbaugh? But I didn't go into much detail. Your answer was the difference uh, was the Lamar. But because of your answer, I admit, I wasn't clear on my question. And I apologize for the novel in advance. Oh, yeah, I'm looking at this. Uh, I see like 87 paragraphs, but it's cool. Let's get into it. He said, um, so since the Raiders game, a lot of Team Keep It Clean has been clamoring for Harv's job, and I can't exactly disagree, but I'm vexed on why people are mentioning Bill as an answer when I don't see how he changes much with our squad. My examples were basically comparing Bill with Tom and John with Lamar. Oh, Bill with Tom Brady and John with Lamar Jackson, but let me dig deeper this time. Bill was and is still the greatest head coach of all time, but his exit from New England was less than glamorous based off of some of the issues we have now. Uh, he got big-headed and thought he could do others' job better than them. Harv's has a, Harv's, uh, has a GM, but would you be shocked if he tried to be the GM in place of EDC when Ozzy retired. He had an inability to adjust to the game of today, and it showed with his drafting and free agents. The last time Bill got a top-tier wide receiver was Moss, and for Harbs, it was Anquan. Mm. Well, I mean, well, I know Steve Smith Sr. was not the prime Steve Smith Sr., but he, 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 he was good that first year for the Ravens. Um, But... Yeah, and Odell Beckham Jr., he was way past it. From, so, you know, I mean, you might you might be kind of right. He said, I, oh, I should have kept continuing. He said, I won't count OBJ as he wasn't a top-tier wide receiver when he got him as much as he was a big name at that point. The injuries overrode his play with the Giants. Now, the O-line was an issue since uh, once Tom Brady left and was really on the decline his latter years, and Baltimore hasn't had a great offensive line since Yonder retired. And after it became uh, good, and then now we're at – bad uh, in addition to the offensive line neither coach contributes offensively to a team which is today's game and their qbs have to overcome these deficiencies to win games it seems when the head coach just knows how to run the ball play good defense and special teams and to win games 17 to 10 <laughs> but yeah look like look i people have been saying bill belichick a lot and again I, i'm still like I'm still really not on board with it. That like wouldn't, uh, I yeah. Anyway, because anyway, he said. Lastly, both coaches have been synonymous with a type of play, the Belichick way and playing like a Raven. But as we can now, as we can see now, both of those mantras are akin to the players more than the coaches. As Brady was the New England way, and Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, Terrell Suggs, etc., were the Raven way until we got Lamar, who is embodying the saying. So I ask, what's the difference? How does Bill make this team much better than what we have now? Now somebody that somebody brought out a point. Um, a couple days ago from a couple videos ago about Bill Belichick and they just talked about how he's an old school coach and would he really be able to mesh with a lot of these new school players in the Baltimore Ravens now I'm sure that they will respect him like crazy because it's Bill Belichick hello like that's yeah we know him um, but would they really be able to would he be able to bring out the best in them um, as far as on the field off the field too one thing you gotta get at get into Harbaugh because John Harbaugh while I don't feel like he brings out the best in the Baltimore Ravens as far as camaraderie and rapport and him just being uh very very um the players they like him that's one thing you definitely got to give to Harbaugh and that's important that's why I know people say oh well what what is Harbaugh specialized in? that's very very important because if you're a coach say for instance you got all the X's and old stuff down packed that's great and that's important obviously but if your players, if they ain't feeling you, then all that stuff, that could go, that, that could go out the window. It, it really, really can. And say what you want about John Harbaugh, and I know I, I feel like, like he, he, this team could be very good with John Harbaugh, 
but I don't feel like he gets the very best out of them, or especially in the biggest moments. I feel like there can just be such a lack of preparation. Uh, there can be a lack of adjustments. It can be a lack of. But anyway, um, he the the team they they love him as a coach. Even though I did see some people saying um, <laughs> in that in that post game speech against the Cowboys. Some people were saying that it didn't really look like they the players were really feeling hardball. It looked like they were like tired of it. it looked like they were just done. It like, but at the same time, they just came from an exhausting game though, where they almost gave it up. So who knows though? But anyway, continuing back to the questions, he said, "Now I got to play devil's advocate with my question. Harbs is a player's coach when it benefits him. Where Bill is more of a dictator. See, this is just what we was we were just talking about this kind of stuff." He said, uh, "Bill would actually." Uh, have adjustments to implement at halftime while Hobbs assumes a gameplay will always work for 60 minutes and even when the opposing team adjusts. My goodness, I should have just kept reading what he was saying because we're we on the same page. But anyway, he said, and Bill is more in line to avoid late game collapses uh, than Hobbs is. Uh, I guess my point is why would you want Bill as the next head coach when he has a similar issue as Hobbs and not someone else? I want to change the way we coach, get an offensive guy. While Kubiak and Sloic are popular names, we could even go with Kingsbury and see a difference in this offense. The one that was the head coach of the Cardinals? That Cliff Kingsbury? Anyway, continuing. He said, uh, want to keep it defensive? You can keep Monkin or replace him if you like and get Vrabel or Flores, but let them work exclusively on defense and head coaching. But until I see Bill evolve, I cannot express any faith in him changing things as drastic as a fan base craves. And I'd argue Lamar is just as effective as a motivator and standard setter as Hobbs is at this point where we can maximize our head coach more efficiently with other options outside uh, of the upside of motivation and culture. Oof. But hopefully with this additional context, I can get a deeper answer from you. And I apologize for not being, or not providing this level of context before. No, no, you ain't got nothing to apologize about, my friend. I, I feel like we, we like really on the same page. That's why when, when I continued to read your question after I gave my answer, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I, I get exactly what you're saying. He said, my second question is also about Haas, but let me state what others have been saying before I ask the question. Our head coach is, or was, a special teams guru, yet we see JT struggling. Well, he was a defensive back coach, too. But anyway, uh, he said, in the Dallas game, we see Zay not spot the ball well on the hands team, and it allowed them the opportunity to put up seven more points on the board. Uh, we have a capable lineman right in the pine because Hobbs said so, and no other reason as as we watch Makari and Falele struggle to block the sun with their shadow. Wow. Uh, we see our defense not make adjustments in the fourth quarter, which, if I'm being honest, or scheme seems really vanilla, but I'm giving it time to see if it molds into something like McDonald's or Wings defenses have. I appreciate that. Uh, he said, and this team being coached to three quarters, hence the 75 cents title. Ah, okay. Okay. I, oh, I like that. I like how that came together. That was nice. Uh, I love that. Shout out to Nova, man. Uh, he said, we see an offense who takes their foot off the gas more often than hence the record. Uh, Hobbs has to wear as a coach who gives up 10 point leads in the fourth so often. With all these factors, my question is, uh, my question to you is, do we truly have anyone in the building to hold Hobbs accountable? I feel like Bashadi would have to do that. Um, he would ultimately, if, if it really came down to it, he would have to be the one to step in wh whatever way. And I'm not even just talking about a firing. Like, to really, like, put Hobbs' feet to the fight. Like, hey, you, if you don't get this right, you out of here. Because EDC could talk to him. EDC could mention it. EDC could bring it up. But I just didn't. This is just me. I don't, I don't know nothing from nothing, but... I feel like with EDC, since they just, they're such a family. And again, having a family-oriented business is not a bad thing, but it can make the tough decisions tougher. It can make the tough conversations harder to have. But with Bashadi, with him, and, and he obviously loves the both of them too like crazy. He's still family-oriented, but Bashadi, with him being at the top, he would, be, he would have to be the one to step in and hold everybody even more accountable. Uh, he said, for someone who wanted to preach accountability, we have a guy who can point three, who he can point fingers, but is unwilling to address the three pointing back at him. Uh, love to hear your thoughts. And as always, keep up the amazing content you provide. Nova, man, I, this was this was amazing. I love this. Next question came from another team. Keep it clean. Patreon, my guy, Nick Brick. He said, I want to add a positive question. OK, I like that. He said, how about Lamar on the center? We look unstoppable in that. And you've been fighting that fight for forever. Yeah, it has been a, a long time. And we did see a little bit of it uh, on the game, like or even even early on in the game uh, this past Sunday against the Cowboys where Lamar was under center. And they just need to do more of it because it opens up so much. Like if, if he's in a pistol, if he's in a shotgun, then I feel like obviously he can execute out of that. Uh, but I feel like it limits your playbook. You want your playbook to be as open, as wide open as possible, not just 
plays from the pistol or plays from the shotgun. Have him under center because that can freeze the defense, even especially on that play action. Oh man, especially on that play action with Derrick Henry, especially if it's a game with Derrick Henry really going like that. Oh, like yeah. So Ravens need to keep on keeping on with having him run plays under center. Running up the score. Next question came from my guy, John. He said, Team Keep It Clean, what's up, everyone? Hopefully, everyone is doing well. We appreciate that, John. He said, I want to talk about Lamar and John for a second. I do think Lamar understands, however, doesn't really care about John Harbaugh's reasoning for taking the foot off the pedal in the fourth quarter. We all have to remember Lamar's first MVP season in 2019 was his first full season as a starter when they ran up the score. Lamar was introduced to the league by running up the score. So the years to follow the 2019 season and to go back uh, to how you stated in the video prior, us slacking off in the fourth quarter, it isn't what he wants. But we also have to understand that to that 2019 season John Harbaugh did take a lot of scrutiny from his peers as coaches uh, saying that it was not good sportsmanship to keep running up the scores I do think mentally that is something that's in John Harbaugh's head I mean 2019 we ran through a lot of teams that that season still hurts we should have won the Super Bowl that season yeah. but I think Lamar wants to get back to that domination through all four quarters and hopefully continue with it in the playoffs to the Super Bowl anyway that's just my two cents on Lamar and John Funny how he said this is his two cents. The previous question from Nova was 75 cents. So, hey, we at 77. So, can we get to a dollar by the end of the episode? We'll see. But um, I wonder about that. I, I don't know. I don't know, though, because you look at the Dolphins game from last year, and they they, they ran a score. They, they, they ran a score up um, against the Lions last year, against the uh, Seahawks last year. And I, I I think there was more too, um, but I, mm, could could that be something in the back of Harbaugh's head? I don't think so, but I I, I don't know, but I, I don't I don't think so because we'll we'll have these games where we blow these teams out. It's crazy, but then we'll have these teams with games where these teams they they'll fight back and they'll claw back. Like I remember even the the Cardinals game from was it last year or the year before last, where the one with Hollywood did play, but Cardinals game we. Blowing them out Oh yeah And may maybe it's a thing Where the Baltimore Ravens Are overlooking These teams And they like Oh man It's whatever It is what it is they ain't, Oh they ain't nothing Oh we got them Oh they straight well, To where they They jump out to a, a good enough Or a good enough lead And then they like these, They ain't doing nothing We got it And then they chill And then you see the team Start creeping back Like look at the, the Raiders game Look at the, the Cowboys game uh, But that Cardinals game Is what I was talking about Ravens jumped out to a good lead and it was off. Oh, Cardinals, and I'm thinking it's Cardinals. Yo, yeah, we straight. Nope. Cardinals start creeping back and creeping back and creeping. But the Ravens did end up winning and they closed it out, which I was grateful for. But they take they took their foot off the gas. So this is something where you know I don't I don't think it's that oh, it's the sportsmanship that's holding them back. I, I think it's just the way that they think, uh, the, the the way that they've been operating. Like and, and maybe they just think they're so much better than the other team. Until that team show, like, look, I ain't about to be no pushover. Nothing's changing. Next question came from my guy Malachi. He said, hello, Engraven. Hope you and the family are doing well. Appreciate you, Malachi. He said, I just watched the game, and all I have to say is, wow. It's not changing. Nothing is changing. Even if we blew the Cowboys out, I just knew nothing was going to change. We really almost blew another lead. Like, is Harbaugh really stubborn? Uh, you have a new defensive coordinator, and for him to be an analytics guy, you would think he would know his defense is one of the worst in the league in terms of yards allowed right now, and he chooses to still take the conservative approach in the second half on offense I mean Tomlin literally exposed him last year for his habits in the media and other NFL fans outside the Ravens fan base just ignored it I see there are still some fans coming to Harvard's defense what will it take for you guys to realize another fourth quarter collapse or maybe the stubbornness to actually put your best players in position to succeed or maybe we do go on a win streak only to be let down in the playoffs because we beat ourselves again and we're sitting in 2025 playing a blame game and most of it will be on Lamar it's a cycle that we've been on and it's time to break it love Hobbs, but just like Pete Carroll and Belichick, his philosophy is stale and he needs to be out or moved up to a front office role. This is just my thoughts and opinions. Sorry for the rant. And what are your thoughts? Now, real quick, something to think about. Something to think about. Um, say, for instance, because I know that's something that a lot of us have talked about, him possibly moving to a front office role. If he did do that, what type of impact could he still possibly have on the Baltimore Ravens, even with a new head coach? Even with a new offense, defensive court, all that good stuff, he could still possibly have a really big impact on the Baltimore Ravens. So that's just something to think about. Um, but but that is the expectation that he would move up to the front office role. But you, it could be like some, and, and it's still early in the season. But Pete Carroll, he moved to the front office role with the Seahawks, and they brought in Mike McDonald, injection of youth, and so far they've been killing it. They've been killing it. 
So we'll see how that season continues to go. Uh, we hope Mike McDonald continues to do his thing. Um, he said his philosophy is stale. He needs to be out and moved up to a front office role. Um, yeah, the philosophy, and that's what we talked about earlier. What some Ravens fans were saying, it just looked like the players were like, oh, whatever. They, when they heard the speech and whatnot, and they, they just looking at it like, oh, uh, uh. so. But who knows? But um, as far as philosophy, yeah, I I think the philosophy could definitely been used an upgrade. We we we've been talking about that for years. We talked about that year years years ago, man. And uh, it's funny that you bring up that and that specific word to philosophy. Uh, we talked about it with Eric DeCosta, we talked about it with Bashadi, we talked about it with John Harbaugh, that the philosophy just needed a big update. The way that the Ravens approached the game, it just needed a big update because Ravens, got they got to get with it. They got to get with the times. Uh, he also said, P.S. Derrick Henry had a monster game this week, so you know what that means for next week. 10 carries max. You heard it here first. Hey, like, look, you, you saying that? I know you kind of half joking, but that's one of them jokes where the, the truth is lying right in front of our faces, too, because we've seen that a lot with the Ravens. I'm so glad you brought that out because that just, ooh, so next week when it happens, it's going to be like, oh, okay, yeah, we knew this was coming because last week he went off, so this week, why would they continue the same thing? Now, if if the, the Bills are really holding him down and if they just, like, they, they locking him up, hopefully that doesn't happen, but if they really bottling Derrick Henry up, then that'll be one thing, but if the Ravens just completely get away from him all the way, then that'll be another. Speaking of the Buffalo Bills, next question came from my guy Joshua. He said, how we go two and two? Just score more points than the Bills. Bills coming in hot. And look, for me, I wanted them to be hot. I wanted them to be coming into the Baltimore. I didn't want them to lose. Well, I wanted them to lose, but I didn't want them to lose against the, uh, the Jaguars the other night because I wanted the Bills to be high and mighty, be rolling. And the Baltimore Ravens just smack him in the face. But anyway, he said, what's up, Engraven? What's up, Josh? He said, and team, keep it clean. Hope all is well. We hope you and your families are all doing good physically and mentally. Oh, appreciate that. He said, I'm probably about to go on a rant, but I promise it's worth it, LOL. All right, let's see. He said, I'm writing this after we beat the Cowboys. If we want a ring, we have to finish in the fourth quarter. Boom. Uh, he said, it's like from eight-ish minutes in the third and the rest of the fourth, we turn into the Panthers. We are too talented and have too much high expectations to be outscored 19-0 in the fourth quarter when we are up 28-6. That is so scary to think about. And it, it could have been more. But anyway, uh, but I'm glad we got this win, even though we're supposed to be 3 and O. Oh, LOL. My question is, what do you think we need to do to close out games and finish? Um, just put up more points. Just um, have more of a, 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 a killer mentality. Just, just that, 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 uh, that killer instinct to really just, again, finish. Don't just think, oh, because we up by 22 points. We straight. No, because we, we've seen crazier stuff than that happen before in the league. Like, really put teams away. Stop being comfortable. Don't be comfortable. Put teams away. Play like you're playing from behind or something like that. Like, well, not necessarily playing, play like you're playing from behind because that's when Ravens can get scary. But, no, put teams away. And don't be afraid to really just continue to go for it, man. He said, uh, also, what do you think we need to fix other than finishing? I think that's one of the biggest things, finishing. Uh, adjustments. That will, that's what I would say. Adjustments. Because... Teams are adjusting to the Ravens, but Ravens are not adjusting to teams. He said, I also think we still need to start being Cleveland or someone at right guard. I can say Daniel did play better than, uh, yesterday, but every team isn't going to be as bad as the Cowboys in the run game. That's true. So we'll see how the Bills do. You know, you know, Daniel Falele ain't getting out of the starting lineup. So we'll, we'll see how he does. It, again, that's what you got to do. You got to start somewhere, though. And for Daniel Falele, it was a great game from him, good game from him, and he opened up some lanes for Derrick Henry. Ben Cleveland also opened up that lane for Derrick Henry, too, on, on that touchdown, but... For Falele, I think that game was so important for him because that gave him a nice foundation to build on. And now it's about what you do moving forward. He said the O-line did better than last week, but of course the O-line didn't give up a sack yesterday. We only threw it 15 times, LOL. O-line is still our biggest problem. Uh, for defense, we played great until the fourth quarter. If I had to rate Zach or so far out of 10, I would have to rate him 7.5 out of 10. That ain't bad. <laughs> like That's not bad at all. Uh, he said, I think he's, his biggest problem is there's a lot of times the matchups we have are bad or not at the right time. Marlon was locking up CD all game, but later in the game, CD is guarded by a rookie with no safety help. And Stevens, why switch it up when Marlon is taking a, a top, top three wide receiver out the game? That's because now before the Ravens didn't have cornerbacks follow. For the longest, they haven't had cornerbacks follow. Will Zach Orr continue that? I think so far he has. But Marlon was in a slot. Nate Wiggins was at outside corner. Brandon Stevens was at outside corner. The only switch-ups that he would do sometimes would be putting Marlon Humphrey at outside corner and Nate 
Wiggins at slot cornerback sometimes. So he'll he'll move Marlowe from inside to outside, outside to inside, but he won't like have them follow. Anyway, he said all of CD Lamb's good plays came on Nate Wiggins and Brandon Stevens. Uh, I was saying the same thing for last week against Adams. I believe we should have, have we should have our best on their best. And if you if you want to have two or twenty one on their best, have help somewhere. I do agree with that completely. Uh, but with that being said, we won, and we got to work on that. Next up is the Bills at the bank. I'm looking forward to that game, and so the world can finally see that Lamar is better than Josh Allen. That's going to be a really good game. It, it should be. I, I think it's going to be a really stressful game. Uh, I think it's going to be one of those annoying games because Josh Allen is – forget what you say, man. Josh Allen is really, really good. He's a really, really good quarterback. I know somebody goes, oh, all the turnovers. He does turn the turn ball, but he puts up a lot of points too. Josh Allen can make so many plays. Josh Allen is extremely dangerous. As an opposing team's fan, he's extremely annoying because he can do so much consistently too, man. Josh Allen is really, really good, man. I know don't don't get blinded by your hate for Josh Allen just because – and I know uh, the comparisons. I know that's what gets a lot of people hating Josh Allen. Um, but if you just watch him, Josh Allen is amazing, man. That, that, that boy can play some football, man, straight up. Um, so he's he's going to be annoying. Uh, he said, from watching the Bills other games, the Bills' strength this year is leaning on the run because there are no threats on the outside now. So the key for the defense is to stop the run and contain Josh Allen and contain the tight ends because they are his best weapons right now. Easier said than done, obviously. Josh Allen pre presents much a much bigger challenge, in my opinion, than the Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott, why well, he got the weapons, he certainly does. But um, and Dak Prescott is still mobile. But Josh Allen just a different kind of mobile than Dak Prescott. Like that boy can run. And he's big. He he runs somebody over too, man. Um, so like when and he's again, he's just so annoying, man. Because and he does he does that thing, the pump fake. Oh, it's it's like oh, it's so frustrating to watch because Josh Allen he'll be scrambling and he'll pump fake like he's gonna throw it. So that'll like freeze a defender. And then he'll either he'll sometimes he'll throw it, but sometimes he'll keep scrambling. And even after he scr starts scrambling, he'll still do another pump fake. And the defender will be like, oh, so, oh man, it's, it's gonna be a game though. It's gonna be a game. Oh boy, it's gonna be a game. But anyway, continuing, he said for offense, the Bills defense got worse and they're banged up. Uh, they can't stop the run uh, or have enough DBs to stop our weapons. So we need to establish the run and have effective passes to win. And that's. How we go two and two. Oh, sorry for the long message. Had to get this off my chest. Hope you have a great rest of the week. Hey, no, I appreciate that. Much love to you, Josh. Next question this came from my guy, Javo. He said, great win tonight, but we left some points on the field. Here are my points. Defense played great, in my opinion, but they got too cute and kept the Cowboys in the game in the fourth quarter. They did, but they were out there a lot. So they probably gassed, too. He said, too, Kyle Hamilton played better. He sure did. And our front line with Namdi, Travis, or Javo can be special in the future. I agree. I agree. Uh, Nate had his ups and downs, but much expected. That's true. He's a rookie. Roughing the pass a call on Oway and pass interference on Marcus was not the correct call. Oh, yeah. That, um, what they call on Marcus? Was it defensive holding? I think it was defensive holding that they called. Anyway, yeah, bad calls, both of them. He said, number five, Lamar played great and loved the fact that he spread the ball around and got Bateman involved. Yes, that's uh, that's true. Um, to only have what he completed like 15 I think wait, what 15 for 18 something like that but um for three of those to be the bait three of those to be the Zay likely had one Charlie Cola then yeah they were spreading the ball around so that's good uh he said love how we stay committed with the run game because it was working yes Raven stick to what works please uh he said uh, O-line played better but got to be more consistent yeah like we said in the previous question they got to start somewhere so that is a good start he said, uh, way too many penalties. Yeah, some of them legitimate, a lot of them not. Uh, number nine, offense wasn't predictable with uh, Derrick Henry in the game or out the game. That's true. That that was big in that game against the Cowboys. Because it wasn't just, all right, Derrick Henry's in, they running. And it wasn't just, all right, Derrick Henry's out there passing. Uh, he said, uh, also glad we fed Derrick Henry and involved him in the passing game. Yes. I agree wholeheartedly. He said, no, <laughs> number 11, worried about Mark Andrews. I just think that wasn't a game for him. But at the same time, it, it's, yeah, I agree. There's something to worry about. And you see number 12, but beginning to lose my trust in Justin Tucker. I can't fight with you on that one at all. Next question came from my guy, John. He said, firstly, I enjoy the live stream and weekly content as usual. I appreciate that, John. Thank you for even watching it. He said, I got a few questions. Number one, as a team, why do we seem to be the only team unwilling or unable to adapt the game plan at halftime? They've been struggling with that. They really have been. They've been struggling with them second half adjustments for sure, man. He said, we can have success in the first half, but as soon as the team adjusts to us and to what we were doing, that's it. We just keep trotting out there and doing the same thing over and over again. I agree. That's an issue. I think that's a big part of those, those comebacks that teams have continued to do on the Baltimore Ravens, even just this year alone. And it's been a big problem, man. 
Ravens have been good starters. First quarter, yeah. Second quarter, yeah. Even third quarter, yeah. But fourth, they just fall apart. Anyway, he said, uh, number two, why is there not enough talk in the media how the Ravens are blatantly wasting Lamar's youth? There seems to be no urgency. There, I, I agree. Um, but see, that's where the media, because the media, they have a lot of respect for the Ravens, as they should. Ravens have earned a lot of respect over it. But I think it it's like a lot of things get clouded, in my opinion. Because you see the Lamar Jackson, he won an MVP in 2019, won an MVP in 2023. So media sees that, and they like, all right, he won an MVP twice, so the team is good enough, right? Yeah, he's the most valuable. This they, they should be good enough, right? And they won a bunch of games both of those years and whatnot. So the, the, the team is good enough. What, what the Baltimore Ravens doing is working. That's why he keeps winning those MVPs. Now, a lot of what they do is well, but there's certain aspects of what the Baltimore Ravens do that have not been working and haven't been working for years and things that they need to and should have gotten better at and taken more advantage of in previous years that they just simply haven't. And, and, and that's an issue. It's been an issue for the longest. And we just wish the Baltimore Ravens would change up their ways a little bit. But that is what it is. But anyway, that's 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 why I think the, the, the media doesn't they don't get on the Ravens like that. And most of them, like ninety five percent of them, never will. So anyway, he said, uh, number three, after watching the game against Dallas and watching Lamar constantly rushing and the options toward big body linemen, uh, while I'm fully aware his ability to run is an asset, so it's him throwing the ball. Why do we constantly let him run the ball on design plays? And why on earth is there not a coach chirping in his ear as he's running full speed into big bodies and lowering his shoulder for contact? Lamar trying to run somebody over. But I think with Lamar Jackson, a lot of times, and, and I think it goes to your previous question where you said, uh, why is there not enough talk in the media how the Ravens are blatantly wasting Lamar's youth? Um, I think it ties into what's around him and the fact that I, I think he feels so much pressure just to make stuff happen. He feels so much press pressure just to do everything that he possibly can in his power to continue to push the Baltimore Ravens offense forward, like literally. So he'll drop a shoulder. He, he might take a, a little tackle or whatnot. He, he will plunge forward to try to get them extra yards simply because he just wants more. He wants more. And he knows that the Ravens, they rely on him for a lot of that. I mean, he is the quarterback, but he's more than just a quarterback. He's more than just a typical normal quarterback. He accounts for so much of what the Baltimore Ravens do. Uh, he said, knowing we, we don't win without Lamar and how important he is. Uh, with that being said, do you think we will trade or look for a different backup when he inevitably gets injured. Don't want to be negative, Nancy, after win, but let's be realistic. He's the most important part of the team. So if we are going to be that foolish, who are we going to have to step who are we going to have to step in? Sorry to ramble, but I'm frustrated. Oh yeah, I think we were all a little frustrated after that Dallas win. Even then, that's crazy after a win. People say, Oh man, you guys not happy with a win? But it's like we got, we got some standards, man. We got standards. Like we ain't could we we ain't complain over no win though. We want the Ravens to win, but it's like, hey, hello. We, we we see the same issues happening over and over and over, and it's like, yeah. But anyway, um, I don't, I, I, I don't think he's gonna get hurt. Lamar is not no injury prone quarterback. And again, I know somebody go, oh, well, what about the, the the two seasons he didn't even finish? Contract disputes, man. Just business. That that that, that was just a nasty side of the NFL as a business. And Lamar said, oh, you don't want to pay me? Oh, that's just that's just me. That's just my thinking. That's what it seemed like. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I don't think he's going to get hurt. Uh, but again, I think he's just fighting for extra yards. I don't think they're going to look for a different backup. I mean, they brought in Tyler Huntley on the practice squad. They didn't put him on the active roster for a reason. They didn't feel like he was valuable enough to take up a roster spot. They kept Josh Johnson where he was, and Tyler Huntley stayed on the practice squad. Then he got plucked off the practice squad by the Miami Dolphins, and now he's getting ready to start in a couple of days for the Miami Dolphins. So that should be fun. I think it's on Monday Night Football, as a matter of fact. So I hope he goes out there and just kills it. I really do. That would be nice to see. But um, yeah, I think that's it. Lamar just he just he just fighting to to try to keep the Ravens' offense alive, try to continue to get every single possible yard he can, and help the Ravens' offense keep moving forward.